The Honourable Member for Vancouver East. 82nd anniversary of the Nanjing Massacre. On November 30th, 2017, I asked the Prime Minister if we will set December 13th as Nanjing Massacre Commemorative Day to mark the 80th anniversary of the horrific events. Since then, with the support of diverse community leaders, I've campaigned for an entire year, raising awareness and collecting signatures to support this endeavour. Over the course of the year, we collected over tens of thousands of signatures from Canadian citizens and residents. The petitioners call for the government to declared December 13th Nanjing Massacre Commemorative Day each year. The commemoration of the Nanjing Massacre is about the formal recognition of atrocities, learning from history and paying tribute to those impacted. If we can learn from history and commit ourselves to preventing it from happening again, humanity benefits. The treatment of Yazidi women in northern Iraq shows the large-scale systemic sexual violence continues to be used as a tactic to assert power, dominance and to dehumanize people and attack their identity. We must recognize that these atrocities now and to act to end those that are currently underway. It is estimated that there that as many as 300,000 people were killed in the Nanjing Massacre. Another 200,000 women, girls from Korea, China, Japan, Burma, Indonesia, the Philippines and other occupied territories in Asia were tricked, kidnapped or coerced by the Japanese Imperial Army into sexual slavery, serving as comfort women. Currently, the UN recognizes 19 countries in conflict where sexual violence is used as a weapon of war. Canada has a rich humanitarian tradition of advocating for peace and recognizing global atrocities in which women and children are often brutal casualties of war and armed conflicts. That's why I moved the unanimous consent motion on November 28, 2018 to declare December 13th every year as Nanjing Massacre Commemorative Day. Order of Canada recipient Joy Kagawa had said to the importance of this motion, quote, in an age of increasing xenophobia and historical revisionism, when even the victims of the Holocaust can once more be openly mocked, the member from Vancouver East motion assumes a new urgency to align ourselves with the world's historians and to guard against revisionists, equate equivocators and deniers of history who attempt to falsify and sanitize the past. Our humanity depends on recognizing our capacity for barbarity. It was extremely disappointing that the motion had failed. Back on November 30th, 2017, I asked if the government would proclaim December 13th as Nanjing Massacre Commemorative Day. I received an encouraging answer from the former Minister of Canadian Heritage as she offered to work with me to achieve this goal. I followed up with the minister and she informed me that the issue falls in the jurisdiction of the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Then I wrote to the Minister of Foreign Affairs who asked me to work with her Chief of Staff. Subsequently, I was advised that in fact the matter should be dealt with by the Minister of Heritage. I then went back to the Minister's Minister of Heritage, at which point she advised that it would not be possible to have the declaration made by December 13, 2017. Even though the window had closed for 2017, I campaigned for a full year speaking with countless Canadians face to face across the country and finally collecting tens of thousands of signatures which I brought to the House on November 28, 2018. Needless to say, I was deeply disappointed that my unanimous consent motion failed. While the message I received from the Liberal government had been positive, however, when it came down to it, for the vote, it was taken, I was taken aback to learn that the Liberal MPs had actually voted against the motion. And Madam Speaker, when I moved the motion for the first time, the motion did not pass, and the Speaker at the time, in an unprecedented way, noted that the member from Sherbrooke Park, Port, Saskatchewan, voted against it. But, you know, at the end of the day, the government members also didn't vote for this motion, Madam Speaker. Now that time, the, uh, I'm sure she'll be able to add to her next uh, allotted time uh, slot. The Honourable uh, Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Canadian Heritage and Multiculturalism. Uh, Madam the President. Madam Speaker, our government recognizes and commemorates uh, various tragedies that happened during the very chaotic time of the Second World War. These terrible incidents remind us that we need to remain committed to promoting peace, multiculturalism, inclusivity, 
and respect for diversity. What occurred in Nanjing on December 13th, 1937 was a horrible moment in human history. It reminds us that we need to remain constantly vigilant about the dangers of all forms of hatred, discrimination, and violence. That is all too easy to be blinded by hate to the detriment of human rights. Our government acknowledges and understands the values of learning and being cognizant of atrocities that have been inflicted on international communities as these horrific moments give us insight into preventing such incidents in the future. The Canadian Canadians know that we need to continue to remember the tragedies of the Second World War, like the Nanjing Massacre, and we need to remember their impact on our communities. The Government of Canada is committed to advancing human rights and gender equality. It has recognized the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which states that all peoples have inalienable rights, including the right to equality, freedom from discrimination, personal security, and freedom from torture and degrading treatment. The declaration that was inspiration behind our own Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. In December of 2017, federal, provincial, and territorial ministers responsible for human rights met for the first time in 29 years to, to discuss ways that Canada can remain an international leader in this area. Madam Speaker, our government is committed, the government's commitment to diversity and inclusion is unwavering, and we will continue to work toward promoting these principles. Together, we must work to ensure that lessons afforded us by history will continue to guide our actions in the future. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honourable Member for Vancouver East. Madam Speaker, the Honourable Member from Sherwood Park, Port Saskatchewan, voted against it at the time. I then spoke with him afterwards, and he told me that that was a mistake. And then I spoke with the Conservative House Leader, and she informed me that they would not oppose the motion. I learned later on that night from the Member. Uh, I, I learned later on that night that the Member of Parliament for Scarborough North has sent an email to stakeholders indicating that the Prime Minister's office did not oppose this motion. With this knowledge, Madam Speaker, that and the confirmation from the Conservatives that they would also not oppose this motion. I moved that motion again the next day, and to my dismay, my motion was blocked again, and this time it was clear that it was the Liberal members who voted against this motion. My question to them is this. Why? Why did they vote against this so that we cannot ensure this commemoration is done to re reinforce the principle of never again? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Canadian Heritage and Multiculturalism. Madam Speaker, the Government of Canada recognizes and respects the unique history of all Canadians as it reflects the rich social fabric of our country and makes us stronger. Because diversity is at the heart of who we are as Canadians, we will continue to work to ensure that the histories of all Canadians are valued and shared. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honourable Member for